Joining us in the studio to better explain this email saga and the roles of the FBI and Justice Department is our legal expert, our local legal expert, Attorney Paul Daranassian. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Good to see you again. Okay, so uh, before we get into you know who's right and who's wrong here, there are certain there must be certain legal parameters within which the FBI director much, must work. Yes or no? Not as much as people think. Huh? Because there are not laws that govern exactly how an investigation is conducted, with the exception that grand jury information can't be disseminated. Much of the rest of this is internal policy and how the department wants to behave in any particular situation. So when Harry Reid suggests that the director, Comey, has violated the Hatch Act, which mm -hmm. prohibits federal employees from engaging in political mm -hmm. work, is that actually viable? I don't know what he means by that, because well, usually it means a, a federal employee is right. engaging in partisan political activities outside of work. I think here the idea that someone in doing his job did something that may benefit someone politically, that's a little bit more of a stretch if we're talking about the Hatch Act. So we're not surprised, though, that these sorts of allegations are being made. I mean, look, uh, two weeks ago, uh, Donald Trump hated Director mm -hmm. Comey and was saying that he had acted irresponsibly mm -hmm. and Hillary Clinton belonged in jail. He even said, I will lock her up during mm -hmm. a debate if I'm elected to the White House. And now, you know, Director Comey's like, you know, the greatest thing since sliced bread. So, I mean, it's, it's just clear that you, you, you can't win effectively well, for losing. Well, that's because the process is politicized. We know that politics is politics. But what you're seeing, and I don't think it's that much different from what we've seen before, though, is that the investigative and executive process is also politicized. Mm -hmm. Look, we saw that even in the Bush administration with respect to U.S. attorneys who Gonzalez, apparently yep. were pressured for political reasons. So I, I think there's, this goes back a long time, and there's certainly tremendous pressures, particularly at this point in an electoral cycle. But did he have a choice? I mean, some there's been some internal uh, bickering between the U.S. Attorney Loretta Lynch and her folks and FBI Director Comey, and uh, p apparently he was warned, you can't do this so close to the election. It's irresponsible. It's a problem. Mm -hmm. And did he have a responsibility to, to say? I mean, he said almost nothing. We know He said, I haven't seen the emails. I don't know what's in them, mm -hmm. but I have to tell you that I'm reviewing them. Well, we don't know what he knows. But it goes back to your initial question, which what are his duties? Yeah. What does he have to do? And then the second question is maybe what should he be doing? And there's no question that this raises tremendous issues and problems by this type of very unusual public pronouncement, oh, we're going to do an investigation, we're opening an investigation. But That's did he not even say that? He said we're going to re-review emails that have yes. come to light in connection with another investigation into this guy and his sexting, the former congressman who's married estranged to the top aide of Hillary Clinton. We've been looking into him because maybe he broke the law by exchanging these lewd messages with an underage girl. And then we had other emails that came to light, so we have to review those. You can argue that's unusual, that it was also unusual the way this whole case was handled initially. But remember, when police officers shoot individuals, the Justice Department says, we're going to do an investigation into right. this. We're going to look into this. That creates a cloud of suspicion and yet most of those cases don't result in any prosecution by the Justice Department. So I, th I think when you look at the way this whole case has been handled, there's lots of questions, lots of concerns. Most individuals, for example, don't get a public determination that you're no longer under investigation. We would love that for many of our clients. I bet. The governor got one of those letters with respect to the From Moreland Barara, Commission. So yes, it does did. happen. There's no one way of, of handling that. But it was certainly unusual also to have a public press conference with commentary on the individual's behavior. Many people felt that was very unfair to the target in that case also, Hillary Clinton, that there was that type of public dis dissemination or discussion of whether she was careless or not. And the problem with doing that is it led to further uh, discussion about, look, well, because of those comments, there really was a case here and you should have prosecuted her. I think that was a big mistake to do that. So he should have said nothing. He should have just issued a, a no charges, then that's the end or of it. Or a letter saying, we have closed this investigation. Obviously, people wouldn't like that. But I think sometimes to do the job of a prosecutor, you have to do it quietly and without public discussion. And the only way around that is by having a very public 
dissemination of information, perhaps a, a grand jury investigation that issues a, a report, perhaps. But again, I think the way this was handled initially led to even more problems that we're seeing now, and probably, by the way, problems that we're going to see after the election. Okay, so one uh, another thing that has to be noted, I mean, look, by definition, any government position is political. I mean, people are bringing up now, he's a registered Republican, yet he was selected mm -hmm. by President Obama, who's a Democrat, he was confirmed mm -hmm. by the Senate. He, um, Preet Bharara, by the way, who's handling the investigation into Anthony Weiner mm -hmm. and his sexting, his latest round of sexting problems, he used to work for Chuck Schumer. Chuck Schumer is poised to benefit if mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton benefits, mm -hmm. because we assume that he's gonna mm -hmm. take over the Senate or the Democrats will, he'll be majority leader. Oh, and Anthony Weiner used to work for Chuck Schumer. I mean, there's so many rings within rings within rings. You can't avoid any of those political overtones uh, in these positions. An individual's comment, too, about when a judge is hearing a case, perhaps who appointed him, what president appointed him. Right. I think one of the real tragedies of this matter is that it will further erode confidence in our investigative bodies but we've seen and judicial that before, have we not? We've seen it before. I think this the bigger the matter, the bigger the perhaps intensity of the issue involved, in this case a presidential election, not just a US senator, quote, not just a congressman. I think the potential for further damage and erosion in the confidence of our investigative institutions like the FBI, I think that's one of the real risks here, regardless of what the reality is. There's also a lot of questions. I mean, I think f for my purposes, I don't understand, you know, the chain of evidence and why, for example, the FBI didn't have the right once the former congressman said, well, here, I'm cooperating, here are my my devices, maybe it, I think it was his iPad or maybe it was mm -hmm. his computer and he mm -hmm. shared it with his now estranged wife and she says, I don't know how those emails got on there, right? Mm -hmm. And why did they need a warrant to open up those emails? Because they are not, when someone ex executes a search warrant, law enforcement, they go into somebody's house, they're investigating a crime, and let's say the crime is robbery, and they see other information of another crime. For example, communications, letters, let's say letters instead of emails, okay. letters addressed to individuals in Colombia or in Mexico that they think may be suspicious of some other activity. Like whether drugs, yeah. Drugs, mm -hmm. for example. They can't just go ahead and open everything that's there. They would need to say, look, we have reason now to believe that there may be other information of other crimes and get a subsequent warrant. In an abundance of caution, I think it's good that they went to a judge and said, look, we have something here, it may be relevant to something else, we want your permission to search this information. And that's true with electronic information too. So from a legal standpoint, I mean, we've been having a lot of conversations since the last debate, or we were for a while there, when Donald Trump sort of dropped this bombshell and said, I'm not gonna accept the results of the November 8th election, and then subsequently he amended it to, unless I win, in mm -hmm. which case I will. I mean, now Hillary Clinton said she would, but now things have changed. I mean, does this give her fodder to make an argument and say, well, yeah, the results were tainted. The results were tainted because of the actions of this uh, political direct, uh, the FBI uh, director, which were politicized, mm. and subsequently the veracity of the entire mm. system is called into question. I think there's two parts to that. One is accepting an election result or not accepting it because you feel that there's issues in terms of how machines were operating, ballots were right. counted. We do that all the time. We have election disputes over whether or not somebody's vote should count, whether they're properly registered, whether the absentee ballot has a marking on it that disqualifies it. So I think those are all legitimate issues in terms of questioning whether or not the, the result you get on election night is going to be the final result. Now, the process and how it was handled, that's a separate issue, and that's really the other part of your question is, well, gee, because of the way this was handled by someone we should not accept the results. That's much more unusual mm. to argue that, that because somebody did something, we're not going to accept the result. I think that's somewhat unprecedented. People always will complain about, hey, there was a congressional race. My opponent got information about a domestic violence incident. It oh, came I up. remember that one. Oh, it, there are, <laughs> this happens all the time. A lot of what we're seeing here really isn't that unusual. I think the intensity may be and the type of issue relating to a presidential candidate and the fact that you have a federal law enforcement agency that's made a comment that may have some impact. So that's unusual. In closing, though, I mean, do you think 
the, the, it's possible, and we really don't know until we know about the content of those emails, that none of these emails had anything to do with Hillary Clinton whatsoever. And it is possible, although I don't understand the technicalities of it, that that device was not, in fact, they had a shared cloud account somewhere, mm -hmm. perhaps, and that device was not something that Huma Abedin used, but yet emails that she sent ended up on there, and they were then subsequently called into question because there was classified potential information in there. I mean, we don't know, right? We may not know for weeks. 650,000 emails, a lot of emails. I think that's what's important. That's, as, as, as an attorney, one of the things I respond to when I read a lot of these stories about investigations and other cases is realizing I don't know. Hmm. And that we tend to jump to conclusions based on not only limited information, inaccurate information, but there's a tremendous amount we don't know. It's very hard to say that, whether we're talking about investigations into our state government or a particular individual and acknowledging we don't know, let's step back and not jump to conclusions. That seems to be very hard, particularly in a climate where news organizations are on top of this, not just on the evening newscast, 24 hours yeah. a day. It is nonstop. You go online, you go on the internet, and unfortunately I think that further fuels, I think, some of our distrust of the system. Well, it's ongoing, it's changing mm. by the hour. Hillary Clinton today saying there is no case. Donald mm. Trump, of course, is now thrilled uh, with Director Comey and uh, it could all change tomorrow. So perhaps we'll have you back before okay. November 8th. We just of don't course. know, but thank you, Paul, for My your pleasure. time.